I first started out uh, working at the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center where we were working on making accelerators that are normally several miles long that can make electrons travel at the speed of light uh, down to the size of, of a shoebox. The lab that I did my, my doctoral studies uh, in Stanford, um, the Stanford Genome Technology Center, uh, was, was home to, to numerous you know, innovative uh, discoveries in the space of biotechnology, namely uh, the DNA microarray, um, and also many uh, uh, important large biotech companies spun out of uh, that lab, including uh, Illumina. I was working on taking large-scale labs, shrinking it down to the size of a chip. So as an electrical engineer, I was always fascinated with miniaturization. I did my doctoral studies on making labs for detecting cells, microbes, and mammalian cells, shrinking them, making them really small. Um, I continued further developing this technologies uh, over the years in an academic setting. Uh, and then when the technology got to a point where I felt it was robust enough to, to actually be used in the hands of patients, that's when we decided to spin off a company. The word Riz in, in Farsi, uh, which is the language spoken in Iran, which is the land that my, my parents immigrated from over 40 years ago, means very tiny. And so since I've dedicated my, my whole career to making very tiny labs, we decided to name the company RizLab. So the CytoTracker is a fully electronic device that has a really small reader that fits in the palm of your hand and a, a tiny microchip that plugs in, which is, a dis which is disposable. Um, and the disposable test strip has inside it a microfluidic channel uh, with, with sensors. What that means is it's, it's, a, it's a tiny channel that is thinner than the diameter of one human hair where cells pass over microelectronic sensors in a single file line, much similar to how airport passengers walk through a security line uh, uh, in, a, in a single file line walking past a facial scanner. The first question that not only investors but even scientists ask is, can you really do this with only a drop of blood? The answer to the question is that there are many things that you can do with only a drop of blood. Um, many different analytes uh, as long as you're targeting the right set of analytes uh, so that the concentrations are, are not widely different. What's difficult, though, is with a single drop of blood, trying to tackle a wide range of, of analytes, trying to do 200 things at once that have, you know, over six orders of magnitude, right? That's one million times difference in concentration. That's very hard. Um, but focusing on, on molecules and analytes that are fewer in number uh, and uh, using a more targeted approach, that's something that is completely feasible. Quantifying white blood cells in a drop of blood is, is challenging um, because it's similar to a haystack that has hundreds of millions of straws of hay with a few thousand needles, and you're trying to find out exactly how many needles are in that haystack. Um, and so what we did was, was come up with, with a, a novel way to make the hay straws uh, invisible electrically and only be able to, to detect and quantify the needles. RizLab's mission is to democratize diagnostic technology by making it extremely portable and extremely affordable. So what the results of this study mean for RizLab is that it proves the speed, 
the portability and also the accuracy of our device, showing that this is a, a, a commercially viable option that has the potential uh, to make it all the way to regulatory clearance. I hope to see in the future that one day everybody will have access to tiny labs so that they can continuously monitor their health and so that diseases can be diagnosed within minutes, not days.